Uh, hello, welcome to the presentation on computational modeling of organizational learning by self-modeling networks. I am Gülay Cambalolo and I will present our paper today. Uh, as, we learn, as we know, learning takes place uh, in human minds in many different ways, such as observation, trial and failure, communicating with each other and even thinking. In our minds, we have representative models of situations to understand and interpret them, and we comprehend the things and create linkages between them by the help of these inner models. In other words, we have in-person mental models of the outside world as relational structures. We use them, we adapt them, and we control them. Using mental models uh, is a spontaneous process that starts very early and continues for a long time. For example, when we look at the development of a human from birth, we can see that the first mental models are created for solid matters and their relationships between us in our minds. And then as we grow up, they start to, uh, we start to have more mental models of abstract concepts. Adaptation of mental models means change on these uh, models by learning and forgetting by time and experience, of course. Our understanding of a concept that we know but don't use it yet can change when we directly use it. Even our understanding of the world sometimes changes when we experience extreme difficulties or extreme happiness, for instance. Sometimes we learn the connections between uh, our mental model states become stronger and sometimes we forget those connections become uh, weaker. And finally, of course, we have the ability of controlling uh, our mental models. Factors like uh, learning speed and persistence determine, determine the amount of control over the adaptation of our mental models. Yes, people uh, have mental models and they learn and organization, uh, organizations also learn. The development of organizational learning consists of four uh, different stages individual learning of mental models. This is our first phase in our model also. Uh, in this first phase, individuals improve their mental models. In second phase, uh, the, their shared mental model is formed by individuals. This is the feedback, feed forward learning part of uh, organizational learning. And in the third phase, uh, individuals start to learn from their shared mental model. It's uh, feedback learning from organization to individuals and it's called instructional learning. And the last one is the improvements of individuals uh, with the help of their shared mental model uh, created in the second phase. One of the reasons that make this topic interesting and worth exploring is that organizational learning both represents learning level and mental situation of people in an organization and also becomes separate from individuals and even affects them at some point. Uh, I mean, for example, we can say that a society, maybe not the whole society, only a part of it, create a culture, but the shared culture becomes very strong and it starts to create the individuals after a point. It's both dependent and independent from people. Uh, it's like a chicken and egg situation. Uh, individuals create organization shared mental model and organization creates them. Therefore, uh, it's really important to study organizational learning. And one of the most popular, popular uh, papers in this area is Kim's paper. And this is a quote, quote from uh, that paper. Organizational learning is dependent on individuals improving their mental models. Making those mental models explicit is crucial to developing new shared mental models. This process allows organizational learning to be independent of any specific individual. And because the mental models in individuals, individuals' heads are where a vast majority of an organization's knowledge lies. Uh, it's very important to study it. This is the overall uh, cognitive architecture for mental models. Uh, we can see the three layer structure uh, like in the screen. As I explained in the previous slides, uh, these are usage adaptation and control of adaptation. 
Then we tried to transform this to a self-modeling network. Uh, it's the picture to see the equivalent layers. Layers on the left are the uh, representations of the cognitive architecture for mental models, and the ones on the right side represent the layers of self-modeling network. Base level includes a network of uh, network of the mental model itself. First order self-model le level includes adaptation tools like connection weights for the base level network at the bottom. And the second order self-model level uh, includes the control tools like uh, speed and learning uh, factors. We have, an we have an illustrative case adapted from the intubation scenario. Uh, here inside the red box, we have a nurse, we have the mental states of the nurse. And uh, we can see that nurse has knowledge on first two job, first two tasks, but not the uh, other ones, and takes action for the first two tasks, tasks. While the doctor, these are the doctor's mental states, the doctor has knowledge on last two text, tasks and uh, takes action for them here. These are the notations uh, and explanations of those four tasks in the tasks in the previous slide. Uh, the preparation part is uh, held by nurse and the execution part is held by doctor. But uh, in our model, uh, we generalize the states, these notations, by naming them like this. These are the uh, task states for person A, these are for person B, and these are for the organization. Uh, in our model, the first person A knows about first two connection, but not the last one for task D. Therefore, uh, this D state is a ghost state for A, is a hollow state. Uh, and there's no learning here in the beginning. And uh, on the other hand, for person B, uh, this is the, th this is the uh, hollow state for person B because person B have knowledge on this last two connection, but not the first one. Therefore, there is, there is no uh, learning in the beginning for this uh, A state. Comparing this with the previous intubation case makes us think that person A is the nurse uh, that, who does the first preparation part, and person B is the doctor who executes the operation. A is responsible for starting off the job and B is responsible for ending it. And here is our uh, generalized organization states for shared mental model that didn't exist in the beginning because we don't have a shared mental model in the beginning. And we, we also have, as I said, we have four different phases. We have four different context states. These are the context states. In the first order self-model level, the upper one, this blue one, we have double states uh, for the connections between the base level states. For each connection, we have different double uh, states. They represent the weight of the connections to make them adaptive. For example, for person B, for uh, the connection between A and B, we have this double state. Uh, these are for individual double states. These are the individual double states, and these are uh, the organization double states. To make the formation of a uh, shared mental model possible, we need connections from individual states, double states to uh, organization double states like this. Uh, these connections are needed in uh, uh, become activated in second phase to make the uh, formation possible, formation of shared mental model possible. After this uh, activation of th these links, these W states become activated also, and they affect the uh, connection between the organization states, base level states, and the uh, shared mental model is created. And also we have uh, the opposite links from organization to individuals, to make uh, individuals able to learn from uh, their shared mental model. 
And this is our overall uh, adaptive network model with the all levels. Uh, base level, as I just explained, the uh, includes the first individuals and organizations mental model states. It's uh, the core of our model. It can be seen as like this. Uh, we have W states here. And in the second order self model level, we have H states to control the speed of the learning. We have M states to control the persistence of the learning. And also we have w, higher order W states here because we have W to W connections and we want to make them adaptive. We need higher order W states here to represent the weight of these connections. And also uh, we have uh, speed factors for organizations, organization uh, states. This is our simulation result, the overall simulation result. These are the phases. <clears throat> uh, these are the phases. This first phase includes the improvements of uh, person A and B's individual mental models because person A doesn't have does not have uh, for state D as a, in the first phase. It remains at zero until uh, learning from organization is done. We can see here. Uh, first three states for person A becomes higher and for last three states for person B becomes higher in this first phase because it's the individual learning phase. And in the second phase, this is the second phase, uh, our shared mental model is formed. These are the shared mental model W, w states. Uh, because shared mental model is formed here, uh, individuals uh, becomes able to learn from their shared mental model. Therefore, their hell of ghost states becomes activated here and uh, they use the advantage of their shared mental model. And also there is a difference here, as you can see, because uh, our persons are different and their persistence of learning uh, values are also different. Uh, their forgetting uh, levels are also different. Uh, here is A is more forgettable person than B. Therefore, A's uh, lines are decreasing more. And uh, in the last phase, here, in the last phase, uh, their I, as I said, their hell of states becomes uh, non-zero. And this all, it's a sh short summary for uh, the things that I explained. I explained mental models and organizational learning, and I showed the pictures of cognitive architecture and self-modeling networks. I described our case and model, and finally, I showed the simulation results. Thanks for listening again. If you have any question, you can ask. Thank you. I have a question, mm -hmm. if you allow me. Uh, regarding the architecture of your network, how mm -hmm. much of it is derived from the first principles and uh, how much is ambiguous? What is the freedom? Did you try to alter this architecture and see what results you get? How much? Uh, sorry, I, can get, I can't get... Uh, the... Sorry. Uh, do you um, derive this architecture from first principles or just by random guessing? What's the reason for selecting this particular architecture, these particular mm -hmm. nodes and connections between them? I see. And is there any ambiguity in this choice? Uh, if yes, did you try variations? Did you investigate what's the influence of the architecture on your results? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, actually, our scenario is adapted from this intubation, uh, this extensive intubation scenario, and we uh, tried to see the organizational learning steps clearly. Therefore, we only took part of it, the uh, es essential part of it for us, according to us, and uh, to see the um, learning from organization, we added some hello states 
These are not uh, random things actually. Uh, and here, here uh, we we made this uh, architecture according to the scenario itself. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for your question. Uh, I have a question. Please, very briefly. Uh, okay. Uh, imagine that instead of this scenario, you have something like a, a person going to a restaurant. And uh, thinking on, on, on these restaurants, it's just like, okay, I need to go to the restaurant and I look, I look at the menu and I need to order what I want, okay? But instead of that, uh, it's not this kind of restaurant, but it's a self-service restaurant. Uh, how could you make a, a system like this to adapt to, to this new uh, uh, perspective on how you should do things in, in, inside the restaurant? Uh, to be sure about that I understand correctly, a person is, is in a restaurant and uh, first he, he or she orders something and then he needs to be uh, do it like self-service. Yeah, the, 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 the question is, what if you have a different scheme on what you need to do uh, at this place and, and, and you have a, a mistaken uh, understanding on, on, on the things that you are uh, supposed to do, just like you, 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 mm. you showed that in, in this particular scenario, you, you should do this and that, but then you discover that you should do something uh, a little bit different in, instead of, of achieving the, the final I goal, see. Or, okay? I see. It's a really good question. Uh, I think we can use context which, uh, for this scenario, because for this scenario, in the beginning, we have a case, and uh, during time, the case becomes change, changed. Therefore, we need some uh, context switch for the, like these context states. We have different context states to switch the case, and uh, persons, or uh, only single person, uh, need to adapt these new states, these new contexts. We, it can be done. It's a good question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. We need to move forward. And uh, we have the next uh, two talks by Laila Van Mertz, correct? And each talk is 15 minutes. Please go ahead. <laughs> 